Grace, mercy, and peace, everybody. Welcome back to another conversation with me, Joy, the founder of Pink Girl Teaches. I welcome you back, and I am so glad to be here having this conversation with you. It is my sincere prayer that you are all doing well, that you are taking care of yourselves, and you are nurturing your soul needs. Listen, you only have one life to live, and I want to encourage you to not allow your life to be to, to be dictated by pain, by shame, by trauma, you have the opportunity every single day to continue to seek the highest version of yourself. It is my sincere prayer for you that as you continue to journey in this year, 2024, that you will become everything that God has created you to be. I want you to remember this, that you were created on purpose and in purpose. I had to get that out. I'm so glad to be here having this conversation with you. Thank you so much for your continued support over the year. I am so happy that we can continue to grow, heal, and journey towards wholeness together. I wanted to have this conversation about, you know, people question themselves and people get so tied down thinking that they've lost something in their lives because they're no longer with this person they once loved. They don't understand that the narcissist was never on your side. They were always there to steal, kill, and destroy. And that is what the pattern of the relationship should show you. But because our feelings get caught, because we've spent time and we've had this vision or this picture in our minds of where the relationship was supposed to go. Narcissists strike you by telling you that we are going to live together forever, happily ever after. Yet the reality of the relationship is that it's pure torment. But for some reason, there are things about the person we miss, right? There are things about the future we envisioned with this person. The one we met at the beginning of love bombing, because let me tell you, this was a challenge for me. I had to learn how to separate fantasy from reality, and that's where we move forward. But for those of you that do feel like you miss the narcissist, those of you that feel like my life is worthless because I don't have somebody there, I want to just have a conversation with you where I help you where I help highlight or where I highlight to you, should I say, five key reasons why you do not truly miss them. And also five key reasons why your life is better off without them. These five reasons are the same either way. Number one is if somebody ever came to you and approached you and told you that your behavior, your character, the very essence of who you are reminds them of said person, said person being the narcissist, how would you feel? Ah, if I can be honest, I would be devastated. I would feel like I am a failure. I would feel like there's something inherently wrong with me because how can I remind you of that person that tortured my life? That may, that will make me look at me and begin to wonder, what did I do wrong? How can I go back and, you know, make it right with people? If they asked you, if I asked you, or if I came to you and I told you, friend, you remind me of your ex. You remind me of that person. And I'm talking about the essence of who you are. How would that make you feel? I believe as survivors of narcissistic abuse, we would feel terrible because we understand the pain that they cause. They, we understand the devastation. These people smell like misery and regret. There is no way that I would want somebody to describe me like that. I would, I would do whatever I can to apologize and make things right. But for that reason alone, that should let you know that truly this person wasn't somebody that deserved to be in your life. This person wasn't somebody that, you know, you want to be associated with long-term, even short-term. Like, listen, I am so glad that that transaction ship, that that failed relationship is, is, is in the, it's buried. It's gone. I, listen, you got to eulogize these people sometimes. And I don't mean in their real life, eulogize the relationship. How about that? Because first of all, no, we're not doing that. But Another thing that people feel when we're transitioning or when these relationships come to an end is that you can feel lonely. But I want to ask you, your life today, outside and away from the narcissist, are you truly fulfilled? Are you truly fulfilled? And if you feel like you're not fulfilled, then it's time to begin to pursue passion. It's time to begin to pursue purpose. It's time to begin to do more of what makes you happy, right? Get involved in your community, volunteer, um, 
you know, um, what was what did I want to say? Um, <laughs> volunteer, right? And also make sure that you have hobbies, things that you like to do. A lot of times when narcissists come into our lives, they put everything at a stop at a standstill and it's like well, you can't do those things that you used to once like like whatever your hobbies or your passions were some of you wanted to write some of you wanted to write screenplays right some of you wanted to um go back to school and pursue those things that bring you joy and make you feel like you're accomplishing something with your life there is no way that you can be with a narcissist and pursue purpose that is like an oxymoron it is it just doesn't happen because the world has to evolve around the narcissist and how dare you think you can have a life outside of them sometimes it's because our lives are not fulfilled with the things that truly bring us joy that we feel like we miss these people because there's a void but let me remind you friend you are up to you you most definitely can fill that void the third thing I want to bring to your attention and the third question really i want to ask you is are you able to unapolog to to be yourself should i say are you able to be yourself unapologetically or do you have to show up differently to please them let me ask you do you need to dim your light so that you can make them happy do you need to um walk on eggshells to exist in that relationship what are the things about you about who you are about who you are becoming and who you want to be that you change listen we know that narcissists have to be the center of attention everything has to be about them but when do you get a chance to be when do you get a chance to show up as who you are and it's impossible for those things it's impossible to be yourself unapologetically in the presence of a narcissist I remember just acting like a whole fool like I you know like a dummy so to speak just to keep the peace like first of all no don't be like me please learn from my mistakes this is one one reason why I love being in this position to be able to tell you my mistakes right where I went wrong what I wish I would have changed what I wish I would have woken up to earlier but let me tell you I must have been in the school of hard knocks because I had to get the lessons. But don't ever diminish who you are. It is an insult to your highest self to begin to dumb down for what? A raggedy, dusty behind child? No, never. The, um, the fourth question I want to ask you is, are you in love with them as a whole? Or are you only in love with the good sides of them? We can't love people in fractions. I know you, like I, do not want to be loved in fractions. Take all of me or leave me alone. But we can't love people in pieces. And so if you cannot accept the whole of them, because, listen, it's true, they can have moments where they appear to be kind, where they appear to be nice, where they make you laugh. But you got to understand that on the other side of that, they are plotting, they are scheming, they are waiting for you to pay up for those laughs. They are waiting for you to, 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 to pay up. For, for them having to make you laugh, for them having to, you know, give you a good day. There, you, you already know. You already know. And so because we cannot love them in fractions, we have to accept all of them, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And like I said, the good is still manipulating you, so there's really no good. It's just that facade. So the question then becomes, are you willing to be in love with an illusion or are you going to accept the truth? Listen, the Bible tells us that the truth shall make us free. I'd rather be free than be lied to to appease me or to appease my inner child because let me tell you this let me remind you of this that a narcissist never falls in love with a higher 
first of all, they don't fall in love, right? But they never go for the highest version of you. They go for the wounded one. They go for the broken one. They go for the one that doesn't understand who they are, that is yet to perceive that God made you in purpose and on purpose. The narcissist goes for the wounded child because it's easy to please that child. It's And you know, when what they feel like, you know, in these relationships is like, it's like taking candy from a baby. It's easy to manipulate you. It's easy to walk all over you. The devil is a whole liar. Let me tell you one thing. We are going to heal in the name of Jesus. There is no more walking around on tiptoes, begging people for love and acceptance, auditioning for them to love you. The devil is a whole liar. It's time out for that. We're not going to be falling in love with potential or the idea of them. Everybody has potential, but are they committed to that potential? Are th do they even recognize the potential? Listen, we're not doing struggle love and we're not doing build a bear, whether it's build a man or build a woman. We're not doing that. Why? The fifth and the last thing that I want to say is, would you want your child or your future child to date someone like them? I pray, I pray specifically, and my prayer for my children and their future spouses would be that they are nothing like that. That's one of the prayers that I am so intentional, that God would give them spouses that, that are pursuing God, spouses that are devoted to God, spouses that walk in integrity, that no matter what they face, they will never compromise their witness, that they would love, honor, and cherish my children, that they would respect them no matter what, that even when you commit, even when these spouses commit to do something for them and are no longer in the mood to do what they committed to. They stand on the principle of their word. They maintain integrity. And I pray that my children likewise would be like that. The last thing I want my children to ever have to go through is this. And here's the thing. I think we can sometimes you know, forget it or it gets lost in, in the midst of our own pain is the abuse that you went through. Your child went through it. There is no way a parent can be abused and the child not ingest some of that pain. So do we want the cycle for pain for our children? It's time to cut these, cut the cords, cut the umbilical cord. I hope this helps you begin the process or continue to process your emotions, your feelings, and you know, just really bring things into perspective of whether this was truly a great relationship or you just missed them because maybe it's time to begin to dive deeper into your journey of healing. Maybe it's time to engage in more activities, to do some more self-discovery, to spend more time in the presence of the Lord, whether you go for coaching or therapy, whatever the situation may be. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would pursue your highest self, that you would pursue the calling of God on your life. Everybody has a call. We are all called to serve in one capacity or another. And I pray that you would arise to be the man and the woman God created you to be. May God awaken the sleeping giant within you. May God heal your inner child in the name of Jesus. Family, I am so glad that I had the opportunity to talk to you. This is something that I have missed. My schedule has been so hectic, but praise God. I've got a strategy to continue to come here with longer form videos. I'm going to be going live on Tuesday, which is the 9th of January is going to be the first live stream of the year. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time is my prayer that you will join me and we can continue to come from behind and pursue our most significant state. God bless you.